Hey guys, it's David. Today we are going to be talking about upgrading your tech or investing in something new. What kind of principles and thought processes you should have in mind to make sure you get the best product at the best kind of price for what you need. We're going to cover the key general concepts and do a couple of worked examples using my history buying Apple products. So, let's go. We're going to start by covering core principles. Whenever I'm thinking about buying tech, or to be honest, anything significant, there's a few things that I always try to have in mind. Number one, what do I actually need? Number two, what kind of budget do I have? And number three, what trade-offs am I willing to have between those things? So point one on our three-point list, features and experience. Features is the core of what I need a device to do. If we take the example of a phone, I think pretty much everybody needs it to be able to make calls and to send and receive messages. The majority of people now want to add on top of that to be able to browse the web, to use key apps, things like Uber, things like Google Maps. Power users might want to add extra things on top of that. 4K video, extra camera lenses, super fast processors and things like that. Let's think of features with an analogy. Let's say I'm writing a movie about a scientist who develops a shrink ray. I need a plot, I need characters, I need a setting, and a few other basic things just to make that concept a reality. Depending how high budget or impressive I want that idea to be, there may be other things that are essential, like special effects, which wouldn't be essential for other people. I think about experience as the added nice factor. Not just what can the device do, but how is the experience of interacting with it? If we continue our two examples for a phone, this could be a bigger screen with a higher refresh rate so that you can enjoy watching content, even though a less expensive, less sophisticated version would do broadly the same thing. Continuing our movie analogy, let's say we have a male lead character, no other constraints, pretty much any actor would do the job, but if by luck you ended up with Jackie Chan, the experience of that movie is that much cooler because suddenly you've got cool kung fu stunts and Jackie Chan charisma. That's probably an added bonus. When you're thinking about your upgrade or your investment, if you aren't sure what features you really need and what kind of experience matters to you, watch and read a few different reviews. If you're able to, try some different devices that you're looking at hands-on. And this way you can start to work out what you care about and what you don't care about. Point two on the list is around budgeting and cash. With thinking about features and experience, we've established the what. What do you need, what do you want? Budgeting and cash is thinking more about the how. How can you afford what you're looking at and how do you optimize it? The first consideration is make sure what you're looking to buy is affordable for you. That's the number one thing with any sound use of money. Next consideration, if you earn cash using the tech that you use and something will help you get more done faster or have extra capabilities, it may well pay for itself. This is the same concept I use when I invest heavily in quality Primark clothing to support my future modeling career. Next consideration, could something else do the same job if you thought outside the box? Maybe an existing item you already have, or maybe you're thinking about two separate purchases and you could find something that does both of those jobs. Good example, an iPad could now serve the job of a notebook or desktop computer for a lot of people and potentially at significantly lower cost. Next up, it's good to consider finance. Did I say finance? No, sadly not, but you can think about that on your own time. When I say finance, I'm referring to optimizing the way that you pay for things. Are there payment plans where you have zero interest? Are you able to earn reward points or cash back? Do you have existing reward points that you can spend on this kind of thing? Lastly, I would say think more like an investor and less like a consumer. More about am I getting my money's worth and good usage, good return, and less about what the day one cost is. If you can think more like an investor, you might start getting results more like an investor. Perhaps like Warren Buffett, arguably the most successful investor that the world has ever seen, you could one day have two Asian restaurants named after you. Truly a dream for all of us. The third and last core principle is the trade-offs that you're happy to take between features and experience and budget and affordability. 
you'll need to strike a balance between the number and type of features you care about and the quality of experience and how premium using those features feels. Maybe a really big phone makes using your phone that much nicer, but does it make it 100 pounds that much nicer? Maybe having Jackie Chan in my terrible movie would make me feel really good, but would it do that enough to make me think doubling the budget is a good idea? Hard to say. Well, actually, that one's obviously yes. Ultimately, trade-offs between features, experience, and budget affordability is subjective. Only you know what matters to you. So my advice here is to think about it and make a purposeful decision. Now for some worked examples. Smartphones. The first smartphone that I had was an iPhone 4. This guy, who's, who's currently acting as my portable microphone pack. That phone took care of basic tasks for me, but ultimately the battery life started to go and the physical home button broke. So I upgraded more out of necessity than anything then. Next up was this guy, the iPhone 6S Plus. At this point, I knew that I wanted a bigger screen because I'd been watching more video content. I also wanted something that could load web pages faster and just had a more responsive experience. I didn't need anything beyond that. I didn't need the absolute top end phone or the features of the iPhone 7, which was the, the premium model at that point. So I got the 6S Plus the same time the 7 Plus was released. And that was one of the trade-offs that helped me to save 100 pounds or so. A few years later, that phone was running well, but 32 gigs of storage, which is what I had, was starting to become a more and more frequent irritation. And the battery life had fallen from comfortably getting me through a busy day to starting to struggle a little bit. So while I could have carried on, I felt like upgrading would be a quality of life improvement that was worth doing. This was 2018 and I decided to go for the iPhone XR. Why that rather than the 10s or the 10s max well i didn't care that much about having slightly thicker bezels around the screen i didn't particularly care about having an lcd screen instead of an oled screen those features would have been nice but for me the trade-off between those features and the extra cost they would have added was not worthwhile next example tablets i started off in 2011 with this the ipad 2. I didn't actually need this device, but I found that I was traveling around a little bit more and having something that I could watch content and browse the web on that was a lot more portable than a beefy laptop and a much nicer experience than a small phone screen made sense for me. I actually used reward vouchers that I'd built up by doing paid surveys for several years during university to pay for this. So in terms of my actual cash, it was free. Fast forward to 2017. I didn't particularly need a new iPad. I hadn't really been using my old one very much and therefore wasn't relying on it but I had been doing quite a few challenging finance exams and I wanted a treat for myself. So I picked up this, the base model 2017 plain old iPad. This was much nicer as a content consumption device and I ended up using it a lot more again. As I got back into doing more creative work in the last year or so, I started seeing lots of people who used iPads in their workflow to help with music production, audio production, graphic design. The fact that this iPad doesn't support the Apple Pencil, doesn't have the quickest processor, became things that were actually limiting how much use I could get from it. At that point, I decided to upgrade to the iPad Pro 2020. You can find more thoughts in my video about that right around here. That upgrade was a good example of the principles I set out before. I knew I wanted Apple Pencil support. I knew I wanted significant processing power so the iPad could actually do a lot of creative work. I knew that I wanted to have a large enough screen size that I wouldn't feel constrained drawing onto the iPad or doing multi-track editing. So using those things, I realized that the 2020 12.9 inch iPad would serve me best. In terms of trade-offs, it would have been nice to have more storage. I got the base 120 gigabyte model. However, the cost of extra storage compared with how much I really needed that and couldn't just manage with an external hard drive meant that I was happy to make that trade-off, have less storage, save the money. In terms of financing, instead of paying the full price of 969 pounds upfront, I had the option via Amazon of interest-free splitting that into five chunks, which just makes things easier from a month-to-month -month cash flow perspective. Earlier, I also talked about using loyalty points. Now in the UK, there is a supermarket called Sainsbury's. They have a loyalty card called Nectar. And with those points, 
points, you can spend them in a number of different outlets. By saving up points from my normal grocery shopping over a couple of years, I had enough Nectar points to get the £119 Apple Pencil completely for free. Third and last worked example, my laptops, which have been my primary computer over the years. Back in 2011, a large part of my degree was significant audio and video creative work. And so I saved up my part-time job income and rinsed the Apple education discount and got the best MacBook Pro that I could afford at that time. This rather beefy son of a gun right here. Now that MacBook is in good working order and I probably could have stretched out from 2011 all the way up to 2020 when I invested in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. However, I decided to upgrade in 2017 because it was just getting a little bit too heavy for traveling around with to be convenient. The older screen with the lower resolution wasn't as nice to watch content on and I wasn't doing major creative stuff at that time. So I didn't need something with quite as much raw power that's when I picked up this, the 2017 MacBook Pro. Now, as you can probably see, the main advantage here was solving my problem around things being too thick, too heavy. Super light, super portable. And this did a good job for me right up until the middle of last year. I'd gotten back into doing serious creative work, heavy audio editing, significant video editing, and I wanted to do more and more of that. That machine was lacking processing power for the heavy lifting I wanted it to do. And also the 13 inch screen size was becoming a real constraint, especially as I was working on music projects with 50, 60, 70, 100 tracks. Navigating those things on a small screen with lots and lots of panels in Logic Pro quickly became a real constraint. That's what brought me to this guy, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I will be doing a review of sometime soon. The 16 inch met my key requirements, best in class processing and graphics power, still portable and, and a much larger screen so that I've got enough room to really not feel constrained and to get more things done. That 16 inch MacBook is the most expensive piece of tech I ever purchased. So to finance it, I investigated the best credit card deals available at that time, found a 27 month interest free card, applied for that, and then immediately used that solely to purchase the MacBook and spread the cost over two years. So that is my personal roadmap for investing in tech. Maybe it's similar to how you thought about things already. Maybe it's a handy structure to organize your thinking in the future. Maybe I've missed some really good points and thought processes. Let me know down in the comments. As ever, a massive thanks to you for checking out the video. If you liked it please like subscribe if you know someone else who might like it please share it all helps to support the channel until next time thank you for watching and take it easy